Are you feeling a sense of something new on the horizon? Come and listen to today's episode as we dive into the concept of walking out your promised land. You're crossing over the, the Jordan into your promised land. Like you have the, the years of the promise and the promise and the promise. And when are, we gonna, when are we ever going to get there? You have to fight for it. You never are invited. You have to displace those giants. Giants are not going to say, hey, honey, great to be. You just come in. Let's have tea. No, you have to slay and pray. And believe me, you, there is warfare at it. And as you can tell, I have, I'm a Deborah at heart. Like they have that Deborah spirit of like, if I know that God's given me something to do, I'm going to fight tooth and nail and I'm going to push forward because I know that we win in the end. So I may as well just keep going. Because here's the thing. I don't know about you, but I love superhero movies. Okay. No guesses who you think I am. I will tell you. Wonder Woman. Okay. But let's go back to the beginning. What is the very first part she had to do? She had to go through training, right? She wasn't just born and loved that you are now anointed Wonder Woman. No, she had to go through training. She was naive, but she had to go through that process of being trained so that when the time came for the weapons to come out and the skills, you know, she was ready. And really what we want to talk about today is how do we help you, the listener, you know, with a Christian mindset and worldview, how do we help to equip to train you in your boot camp to get through this and, and to reframe it and not see it as punishment or that God's abandoned you. He's like, no, this is for your own good. Struggle is good because it's resistance. Going to the gym, be easy for you. They're not going to do anything. You need that that pressure and that resistance where you lean in and you're building that, that memory, that muscle memory. And we need to do, and I know, you know, God's called me to this mission of helping people build the mind muscle memory to use the mind and to renew the mind like I, my ministry is what I call business tree business slash ministry is I take Romans 12 too seriously I take it to the bank like it's great to say that and it sounds cute just to quote it as a scripture but what does it mean how do we actually walk it out is by doing these things we got to get sassy and we got to get serious about this is mine God has said it said it to me I have the, the the proof where it says it's written in heaven and he's given it to, and that's where we I'm, you know, from a spiritual warfare side, I'm very much about trying to help people step into that authority. Like if God is, if it's written as in heaven, we need to bring it to earth. But it means you need boots on the ground. We need to have that army mindset of getting in alignment, getting trained, doing the hard work, doing the sweat, not using an excuse. Being a victim is no longer an option. We have to be more activated. But what did he say? You need to possess it. What does that mean? To possess is an active word. It's an adjective. It means you have to put action. You don't just go, you know, sit there on a Sunday and pray, Lord Jesus, you know, bring me everything I want. It's like he's not Santa Claus. He wants you to do something. So I'm very much a doer. How do we put this into action? How do we go to war for what is rightfully ours? And this is what I'm passionate about is teaching people how to take authority over their minds, over their, their lives, their, their heritage, their generational line. There's people in your past, in your history, who fought for things that have been allowed to let fellow like I always like God talks to me in pictures I have this imagine of you know like a whole um if you can imagine being in the post office in heaven that there's all these gifts that have been boxed so many of them are dusty they have all these old labels the people they were meant to send to who are meant to open those boxes and activate them have either passed on but in our generational lines if you know we that's what the ancient paths are that God asks us to partner with him in, in finding the ancient paths is to walk out his actual plan the growth mindset is often not talked about in Christian circles because we're not really aware of it as something that we can activate. Now, what I mean by that is there's a difference and there's a lot of, I mean, I have a lot of content on my website that you can, if you want to know the difference. But Carol Dweck famously coined this term, the difference between a fixed and a growth mindset. So just as a quick recap, a fixed mindset is, you know, you have it if you're like, oh, I can't do that. No, I could never do that. Always putting limits on yourself and just not even trying. Where growth mindset says, I might not be where I want to be, but I'm on my way to get there. And I have a, I'm open to learning, I'm coachable, I'm, I, I'm, I have a humble attitude and I don't mind being told, listen, this is where you need help or this is where you could have, you know, improve. Because with a growth mindset, there are no limits. You can become whoever you and God want to be, want you to be. So if just having a growth mindset gives you this news that you're not stuck with the brain you have, you're not stuck with the life you have. You have a choice. That's the one thing God will never interfere with is our free will. And I always wondered, like, God, why don't you just make everyone just listen? Like, can't they just behave and just fall in line? He says, I didn't want compliant factory workers that are just robotic. I want actual people who choose the path. 
who choose the narrow way, who choose to do it the right way. So that is our challenge is we live in the, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. So how do we function the best is to get ourselves trained and equipped and using what God has given us. Hey, I'm a practical girl. Tell me how to do this. It's all great telling me that the science, but how, what does it mean? How do I walk this out? And I was looking for some kind of sort of discipleship kind of method. And I was like, there wasn't one. So guys, like, how about you create one? So I've spent the last five years creating my discipleship model training program that actually helps Christians overcome their mental blocks, rewire their brain using psychology and the neuroscience and the Bible, because here's the good news. Science is finally catching up to what the Bible has told us all the time, like renew our minds daily. It's because we need that as a daily practice. There has to be a reason. Like I'm a strategist at heart. I'm always thinking of like there's steps and there's a system and there's like something's broke. We need to fix it. I keep repeating myself. I keep repeating patterns and behaviors. I'm like, why do I keep thinking that way? Do So as I started to analyze it and God started to reveal these things and we started to clean out and do the inner healing, he realized that my mind was a hot mess. The machine up here that was meant to be moving the car and driving the car was all sorts of, all sorts of messy. So he's like, how about we, we start to do the work to clean that out? And then I really dove into understanding how does the brain work? How did God make our brain? What is the brain? Like, what are thoughts? What? And then, you know, I, I stumbled across neuroscience, which is the science of how the brain works, because now we have neural imaging where we can actually see inside the brain. And it's just fascinating. And, you know, we've got neuropsychology is understanding the psychology of our behaviors. And then... The other thing that I felt was missing, though, when I looked, you know, I was really looking for help in books. I didn't find something with the Christian worldview. There was a lot of clinical psychology books, which are great. But I was like, I want to give people, especially from a Christian worldview, that if other people could do it, so can you. Those successful people we hear about, I mean, I've mentioned everybody from, you know, Moses and David in the Bible to Michael Jordan and Elon Musk, because there's something we can learn from everybody's lessons and life pursuits these elements and the 21 keys include everything from perseverance patience process planting and i go through and i use every person's history and story to illustrate this but what does it mean for you is that you can activate these keys you can unlock your own destiny by applying these principles because they're free for everybody everybody is open the people we hear that are successful in life are just the ones who say i'm going to do it i'm going to do the work i'm going to do what's required so if mindset is one of these things that you're like, I have never heard about it. I don't even know what it's about. Go and grab the book, Unlock the Mind of a Champion. That's an easy read. You can read it in less than an hour. And I've written it in a devotional style. So it's like you can read one key a day and I have uh, prompts and keys, reflection exercises to help you think about it. You know, for anyone who wants any uh, more information, the best place to find me is at mamikacooney.com and I'll spell that M-I-M-I-K-A. C O O N E Y dot com, and I have a bunch of um, mindset tools, articles, and books that they can um, read and, and connect. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button, click to subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. Until next time.